lights down the auction, Professor, here. I've got some items to mail out today. I sold some 78 records last night. Um, I thought I would go over how I pack them, what I use, um, the best uh, place to find stuff to pack. Um, first off, my boxes. Uh, most boxes I get, uh, I buy from Walmart. Um, I use the uh, 12 by 12 by 10 and a half. These are what I put 78s in. Uh, 78s are 10 inch discs, so they fit perfectly fine in here. Uh, for bigger items, I use their next size up, which is a 14 inch cube. Uh, price wise, I believe these are like 73 cents out the door, tax included. The smaller ones are just a few cents different. If you can't find them at Walmart or you just don't have a Walmart, uh, I've gotten these from box manufacturers locally, the ones that do the huge amounts. Um, you might have to order a little quantity to get something oddball, but this size is a standard size. Uh, either one of these is. I can get them at a local box uh, printer manufacturer for around 64 cents. i got to pick them up, um, and it's a little out of the way, so I usually get them at Walmart. Um, unless, again, I get quantity discount on them. Uh, for 78s, and for most anything, um, I cut these down first. You're actually going to need two boxes to pack a 78, um, but with that you'll have extra parts left over. Uh, with these, I cut up everything with a steak knife. It's not as dangerous as using an X-Acto. I've used these for years. They're cheap, don't cost you anything. I've got tons of these laying around, so this is what I use. Uh, I start, I literally split down the boxes. Down the sides, down the sides, and I split these into four sections. So, for each 78, what you're going to need is one box and one of these. Um, I usually use the one that has the leftover flap on it from the other one, and I will show you why. For a 78, this is actually too big to fit in its own size box. So what I do is I cut off the edge. Knife just works so much easier for me. So this is now the size that is going to go into a box. So I already have a box that I put together. Here's the box. Um, for the box part, tape it up on the bottom, I do crosswise across, and then I tape up all the edges. On the inside of the box, what you're going to want to do is score it. I score, I don't use one of those pre-cut down box scoring tools, I just use the knife. I go along, I estimate uh, four inches down, three to four inches down, I want to shorten the size of the box. Uh, the end of the result, the box is this is what the end result is going to be. It's a box. It's already labeled. Um, it's going out today. I sold three, as I said, so uh, this is how I wrap them. This is what this box will be end up looking like. As again, I'll run the line across the inside of the box, all the way around, turn it up, and I'm going to cut down to where I scored the box. I don't use an exacto blade to score the box because if you do, you're going to cut too far into the box and it won't do you any good. So I cut down on the sides. Keep cutting, keep cutting. So at the end result is after you get the record in there, fold the two flaps. And that's exactly what the box was I showed you that I've already packed up. This will be the finished size and what it looks like on the outside. To actually wrap the record itself, it's been cleaned. Uh, I have a record cleaner. Um, if you don't have a record cleaner, you can actually use just a little bit of soapy water with a nice, clean, soft washcloth and wash around both sides. Try not to get the label wet. Dry it very carefully. Take your time. Uh, it'll shine when you're done, usually, as long as it's a good condition record to start with. These, I take off bunches of records when I get them, and I don't want the records. I usually trash the records, but I always save these or the paper ones. This is actually one of the nicer ones. Uh, it's a little thicker uh, paper. I've got thousands of these. Um, get them whenever you can. You can actually sell these online, too, without the record. Uh, the logoed sleeves sell a little better. I sell 50 of those usually for like 25 bucks. Uh, in, inside it goes after it's been cleaned. I get these bags are actually off of, uh, I believe, eBay. I get them by the thousand. It's like 19 or 20 bucks. 
I seal everything I send out. I don't care what it is, it goes in a bag and usually in a box. Clothing and all. I put mail out shirts, everything in a little box. Uh, it's a little safer for the material. I've got a ton of boxes because I do have two anchor stores. So I get uh, $300 worth of boxes. I never use them all. Uh, I use more of the Walmart and other ones first, honestly. It's taped up all the way around the side. It's all sealed up. Uh, if you haven't seen one of these, I'd recommend getting them. I never use the, uh, the little tool ones. This is my favorite. Uh, these work awesome. I've got three or four of these. They're like 20 bucks from Uline. Um, I don't know if I got it straight from Uline. I just ordered the cheapest version that was a Uline off of uh, Amazon or eBay. Um, it doesn't really matter where you get them, whichever's cheaper. Here's the box we cut down. I'll score it again. Just a little tiny lip where it's a tiny little gap there so I can make a little pocket for it. That's the pocket. You can kind of see it's left a little gap. Inside here. I'll take the knife again and I'm going to score it to make this a little smaller. So it's scored and then just fold it on over. And again, the dispenser works great. Snap. Just watch out on these. I've cut myself a few times on that. Try to tape it in both directions. Make sure it's tight on there, but do not push or crunch it down in there. That's pretty much it for the record itself. The rest is all getting some uh, paper crumpled in there. I always use paper, or if I have the little uh, styrofoam popcorn, I use that in there as well. Um, I don't go out and buy it. Um, if you want to wrap, I used to wrap these in um, bubble wrap. I'd go get the end, end cuts. If you're not familiar with end cuts, um, bubble wrap is done in huge, huge, huge rolls. And then, depending on what the customer wants, they'll cut them down. At the end of the day, what they have are end cuts, which are chunks of random size, um, bubble wrap or random width, I should say. They, they're they usually in huge rolls, uh, like a thousand feet. And I pay 10, 15 bucks for one of these things. It's maybe a twentieth of what you pay from the store or at Walmart. Um, my kids use them for chairs sometimes when I do buy them. Um, I usually don't mess with them much anymore because paper is free. Uh, the post office library, they always have those free little newspapers. I'll usually pick those up or I have friends, neighbors saving them. Uh, I'm a cheapskate when it comes to stuff, but I do buy only new boxes. Um, part of that is because I don't have space for the uh, postal service boxes and the eBay boxes that I get for free, plus the ones I have to buy. Um, I limit space, um, and usually what I send out, I don't really send it priority. Uh, records, I don't send priority. I have better luck not sending them that way. Um, I've always sent some media. I've never had an issue boxing the way I do, so... That is my personal philosophy. Do it however you want, but um, I haven't had any broken records or any issues with records, or really pretty much anything for that matter, shipping-wise. So, Okay, so now after I've got the record ready, back to the box. I've already stuffed in, I don't know, maybe eight sheets of paper. You don't want a ton of paper. You need some give to it so it can move in there. If you cram it full and tight with paper, you're going to break the record. Um, it doesn't take a lot of paper to wrap it, literally like 16 sheets maybe total, 8 on each side. Record goes down inside flat, literally like this. I have a layer of paper in there, and then we shove some paper on top of it. Just regular cheapo newspaper, whatever works for you, whatever you can get. Again, if you get the uh, kernels or you really want to go out and buy bubble wrap or have it, um, you can use that too, uh, but again, don't buy bubble wrap at the don't buy bubble wrap at the store. Go out and call a box manufacturer or somebody who does shipping supplies and see if they will sell you their end cuts. Chances are they're going to. I found two that do it. Um, it's very, very, very cheap. It'll cut your cost down like by a twentieth, depending on how much they charge, or if they haven't even thought about selling it that way. One of the places I talked to pretty much just trashed the extra ones. I don't know why they didn't think about selling them. Um, after I talked to them, they actually started selling them. They give me a discount because uh, I came up and confronted them with the issue and asked if they would do it. So I get them at a real reasonable rate when I do buy them. So you saw I didn't put a whole bunch of paper on the front. That's literally all you need. We're going to fold it right back down again. Fold this one down. Fold this one down. And we're going to tape it.
I've always used these little dispensers. Dispensers work great. Bunch of tape on it. I tape it across the top several times. I tape it, tape it where the uh, seam is for the top, and I over tape it as well too. I tape up all the edges. You may not wish to waste the time. I do. It just preference, I guess. Back over to here. That is the box, 78, packed up. Only takes a few moments. I've grabbed the label. I print them out on paper. I never buy labels. Why waste the money? I don't do uh, FBA, so I don't need the other printer. It's just a quick matter of cutting them out. Saves you some money, saves you time if you only have the one printer. I've got a couple, but they all are full-size laser jets, so um, it's just not practical to change them. I actually crumble these up, and I save these for packing material as well, too. There's nothing printed on them that says anything personable, so that is that. I always wrap them or uh, tape the label on so that the seam side gets taped again when I'm taping the label. So center the first piece on it. So I put it down the middle. And then the sides. If you wrapped it well, this box can actually be dropped or thrown around. It's not going to hurt the item. Do it all the time. The post office is very rough. Um, that's the best way I have found to wrap those. Easy as peasy. Um, it works great. Uh, for 45s, I actually cut these down even further. This is what I use to wrap a 45 with. Again, as I cut down the um, back, let me just show you. These cut down into sections too. These are the next size up, the one, the uh, 14 squares that I use for the postcards or paper items or anything. I cut these up as well. I've done this for years, so trust me, this is the best way I've found for stuff like that. This one here, one side, so you have four of these. You can use this one piece here. We'll wrap up magazines, books, photos, pretty much anything like that. I further cut this down to do the postcards. So what I'll do is I'll fold this here and I'll cut right along that seam. So then this, this one I'll set. This one's already got the fold. And then I cut right down the side. And that's how you end up with a bunch of these. So 45s are uh, easy to pack. You don't need the special 45 packers. All it takes is you put one in here. You're going to fold this in half. Fold this in half. Well, here, I'll show you real quick. Fold it in half. So say the 45 is inside. One piece. Two piece. 45 in the middle still. And then a third one. And that's a 45 pack right there. Um, I put the label here. I tape up all the sides. I tape up the edges, and off it goes. So um, easy as well. I also sold a postcard today. Well, I sold a bunch of postcards, but I'm going to show you how to wrap one. I buy these 5,000 at a time. Um, I sell paper items like postcards or Victorian cards or trade cards or product labels from, say, 1930s all the way through back to the 1850s. Um, this one here is what I sold uh, last night. It's a real picture postcard. I got 17 bucks for it. I paid 50 cents at a thrift store or a flea market or somewhere. Had it for a while. I've got maybe 20,000 postcards. I probably have 5,000 up right now. So postcards are a good seller. I sell at least one or two every single day of the week. It's an item you just list and forget about it. I never touch them. I never alter the prices, ever. Um, they always sell. Eventually, everyone sells. Um, I rotate through my stock. Um, I don't take them down, as I said. Just keep listing them. Um, these, I seal everything in one of these little plastics. I don't care what it is. Everything goes in plastic. Shirts, clothes, books, magazines, everything. Again, I use this. We've got it wrapped there. That's how it's wrapped in a plastic. And these that we just cut down, put it up here, fold it, fold it, we're going to tape it, tape it, and 
now it's taped in here. Uh, another item that um, I sold is a still, uh, original promotional still of Stephen Bishop, a uh, musician. Um, it's actually from a, the Natalie Cole special from um, CBS. Um, they had some dealings with Disney. I worked for Disney for 10 years. I did artwork, other things, Fantasyland artwork. Um, and uh, they had a bargain basement there that sold employee-only items um, and stuff like advertising. They also had Sid Cuengas, which I think is still there in the Disney MGM Studios. And they sell unique items. I used to buy a lot of stuff there when we worked there and turned around and swapped some of those on eBay. Um, you used to get discount coupons as employees or percentage off or on and on and on, stuff like that. But these sell very well. I think I got 22 or 23 bucks for it. I sell hundreds of these a year. Um, I pack them up in these. These are actually Walmart uh, twist tie bags. Under $3 for 100 of them. They fit in here nicely. Uh, this is what I always use for these kind of packaging. Slide it inside. Again, everything gets wrapped in plastic. Anything can get wet in the mail. I don't take any chances. Fold it over. Make sure it's nice and flat. Tape it on one side, fold over, and then we're going to tape it down. That's how it's wrapped up in plastic. And again, this is the same piece I used for, or same corner side of a box I used to wrap the 78 itself. I cut this down from the uh, 12 by 12 by 10 and a half. You get four of these for every one of those boxes for the 72 cents. And then I'm going to put it in here. One fold. Sometimes on stuff like this, I will add a little extra protection. I take one of the ones that I used and I just used for the postcard from the 14 square box and I'll use this and hold it just over where the photo is and then I'm going to run a line and then fold this over at the line. I'm going to keep this in here and I'll show you what I'll do with that in just a second. And then you're going to do another score on this little flap right there. Fold that, and then one more score, and that is basically it. I'm going to grab my dispenser here. These things are great for hands-free use, just to let you know. This piece here just gets whacked off. Throw that out. That goes in the recycling. I do recycle all the junk cardboard. You're going to want to run a couple to keep this flap down. This is going to make it there to its location without a fold, shipping it this way. And I'm going to wrap it the other way. Doesn't have to be fancy looking. So that's the gist of this. I'm going to run another one up here on the top. And then cover up that edge. This is 20 bucks for me, so I'm not really worried. This is the profit, what I made off of this. So if it's not exactly wrapped perfectly or it takes me a few more moments than it would somebody else, I'm fine with that. Again, this is my preference. This is how I like to wrap. I usually cover the corners on stuff like this and then secure it and wrap all around where the tape meets the cardboard. That's that. For um, things that don't need to be bent, um, I actually print up sheets of these. I use Word. I don't use stickers for anything or labels. Um, I've got a paper cutter. It only takes a few moments to cut up 50 or 60 of these. It doesn't cost anything. It's just paper and printer ink. One goes dead center on this side. And then the other one goes on one side. So I got it over here. This leaves me a spot for the label over here. I can get the scissors. Again, cutting off the eBay part on the label. Again, I save these. Sometimes with wrapping from just one day, I'll have enough to wrap a 78 with these. Uh, I crumble them up and throw them away anyway, so it saves me some time. And again, down the middle, and then on either side. And 
and that's how I wrap uh, a magazine if I wrap it um, I'll do the same basics but I'll use the next size up depending on the size of the magazine so I would use a section of the 14 square box for a bigger magazine or newspaper or something like that line. I do sell a lot of magazines uh, vintage pinup style um, sci-fi pulp um, I sell a lot of newspapers usually World War II or before um, usually they can be had really cheap out at an estate sale, even not in the greatest condition. I still sell them. I pay it practically nothing. Um, so paper items are one thing I always center on. Um, I sell a ton of them. I make a lot of money on paper. Last month I think we did 10 grand plus just in paper items alone. That's not counting the records or anything else, and that's just on eBay. Um, I don't sell all the paper items cross-promoted on Amazon, but I do some records. I cross-promote everything. Um, photos I've cross-promoted. Uh, I, I have some that are only on Amazon and some that are only on eBay. Um, only because I sell a lot of the photos from eBay and I'd hate to be swapping back and forth and making sure I don't miss one that wasn't taken down on one side or the other. So uh, that's how I pack these. I'll show you some more packing videos in the real, uh, real near future. Um, I'm going to start posting what I've sold videos starting either this week or the first of next week. So you can kind of get an idea on my account itself, my personal store. Um, and I'll give you my store name and you can kind of see what I do. You'll be able to look at all that uh, within the next week or so. Um, we did want to pull a few things down before we opened up that information. Um, and we wanted to rent by our lawyer. We do do some art and some things that we own the rights to, um, copyright and things along that line. Trademark I have too. So um, I wanted to make sure we wouldn't have any issues in the future for sharing openly on a public platform. So again, please subscribe to my channel. Um, watch my videos. Like and comment below if you would. Thanks. Have a good day.